Welcome to the official pod. We are down here in Mobile, Alabama. By this time, the Senior Bowl is over, but I'm joined by Michael LaFleur. We are presented by WinBet. Betting is a team sport. Bet together at WinBet. You made an entrance here today. How different is your role now as the offensive coordinator as of the New York Jets compared to the last time you were here working for Kyle Shanahan in San Francisco? Yeah, 49ers? much different, you know, and it's but it's uh, it's coming full circle a little bit. You know, I mean, when we came down here, it was it was a really good experience. Obviously, the first two years in San Francisco. Um, I was the receiver coach and pass game coordinator and did a lot of stuff still with the quarterbacks because Kyle was floating around as a head coach. When we came down to the senior bowl, he's like, it's your show, you know, so there was going to be no interaction. And and basically um, he he worked in 2011 uh, when he was with the Redskins. They worked down here and they put a lot of offense in, I guess, absolutely overloaded the players. And so the only piece of advice he gave me is like, you're not going to make the same mistake I did. So we came in with a very simple plan, just allow these guys to play fast. Um, I thought we had a really good week when we came down here. Uh, It was really good for myself and all the other young coaches uh, just to kind of run the room while some of the other guys took a step back. And then, um, you know, then I get down here and there's, I, I don't know where to stand out there right now. I'm just trying to watch, but also not get in the way, but you're trying to coach, you know? So, um, but it's, uh, it's cool. It's cool to watch Rob Calabrese and all the other guys uh, get a crack at it. Yeah. You're a young dude, but you're talking about Rob Calabrese, who's I believe 31, you're right. 35. What's it like when you go in that quarterback's meeting room and watch him orchestrate? Uh, I'm 34. I got uh, one more uh, month. Uh, and the only reason, Eric, I'm going to say that is because my wife just turned 35. So we always have that little six week buffer where I get to be the young. Okay, so I jumped the gun right there. Uh, no, it's um, it's cool. You know, Rob, um, Rob's a uh, very intelligent, smart guy. Um, he knows how to communicate with the quarterbacks. Um, I had never worked with him before, obviously. And even though he was in this system before in Denver with Rich Gangarello, there's still nuances and differences, you know. So that year one, you're still trying to get um, on the same page with everything. And uh, he's ready to take off, you know. And it, this is a great experience for him, but he's he's ready for this experience. I'm more fired up for guys like Mac Brown, Billy Vandermerk, Jake Moreland running the offensive right. line. Um, just guys that uh, haven't ran an NFL uh, room before and where they get to just coach that whole thing up for the week. How did you prepare for it when Kyle said you were going to be the guy down here? How did you get ready for it? And with that being said, what did you say to Rob? Because I know you don't want to psych these guys out, put too much on their shoulders where it's like, they're making more of it than maybe they should and where you have over preparation. Well, I'm going to, yeah. <laughs> when, when we came down here in 18, they did not have any of the documents from seven years ago in Washington. Yeah. When my brother was the quarterback coach, no one had any of those documents. So we did somewhat have to start from scratch. Um, and again, I got the piece of advice from Kyle. Hey, keep this thing simple. Uh, the, the whole uh, deal for everyone in this league is is to, you know, just see these guys play as fast as humanly possible. Give a little bit of stuff in uh, to them where you can see their brains working, adding a few things and switching up a few things every single day. Um, when we found out we were coming here, they already had they already had the test because I, I had all the files. Yeah, right. So I'm like, hey, we just basically got to switch this over to our terminology yeah. now, which was basically the same terminology. So they got a lot of. Uh, a lot of the, the the hard work out of the way. They just had to make the cutups and, and get these guys prepared, re-script it on out, get it out to the guys. And now these guys are so prepared. The players are so prepared with all the different trainers and, and stuff that they're working with. They get the information even faster than they did three three uh, years ago. I mean, they're asking for the information two weeks in advance. And that's good and all. You'd almost get bored because there's not enough offense to, like, you know, you'll learn it in two days if you're going to study it. You know what I'm saying? It's not our whole playbook by any means. It's 5% and it's dummy down. So, so, so 5%, you said probably, yeah, five, 10%, but I mean, there's so many rules with this. I mean, you can't get in three by one formations. It's, uh, you know, you're, you're, you're stuck in two by two, um, stuff like that. So you can't motion. So, I mean, there's, you're, you're so limited in what you can do anyways, you know? So that's why I like to, you give them the playbook, but then you keep a couple things on the side, so that it doesn't get old and stale. And then you also want to see how fast guys can learn, you know, because that's part of, you know, the, the unique advantage that we get is we get to be in the meetings with them. Everyone gets to watch them out there, but we get a little bit closer and we get the meetings. And so you you get to kind of see how they process information. What are the challenges with the terminology 
in such a short amount of time? Um, just that it's new, you yeah. know, um, a lot of these guys, and this isn't new this year or last year. I mean, this is college football. What seems like over the last 10, 15 years, they're not even in huddles anymore. So it's sometimes it's, if they didn't do it in high school and they didn't do it in college, they've never been in a huddle here and not only a play call for the first time, but a play call that might have 10, 11 words in it, you know, and it's telling everyone where to line up, what kind of split to take, what's going on in the protection. If I'm a receiver, I don't need to worry about the protection until I have to, because there might be one word where I'm, I'm a part of that protection. Uh, so it's just being able to process that information, being able to uh, kind of split those play calls up in your head. Everyone's going to hear it a little bit different, but you try to give them uh, a couple uh, coaching points to, to how to hear it. And then, um, you know, it's one thing to be in the meeting, get it uh, coached to you, but it's another thing in real time because you want to be able to break the huddle and not look back like, what do I got? Right. You know, because, again, we're, we're all out there. And if you're doing that too often, then there's something that's uh, maybe a little bit off on how you're hearing it and we'll get you coached up. But, uh, you know, so it's a challenge for them because it's a lot of a lot of it's new for these guys. Can you talk about the advantages for the staff to not only get these guys on the field, but get them behind closed doors, watch them? absorb the concepts look at the film talk about um you know it ba basically recite what you guys are telling them yeah no it's you get it you get a um you know up close view of these guys and and how they're uh, digesting the information uh, that you give them and not only digesting it and be able to uh, recite it back to you but then uh, after practice come back and you know you're coaching them up see if you know you can ask him a question hey what do you think you could do better here and it might be something you've never even coached but hey I, as a receiver i could have you know attacked an edge a little bit more and got a little bit more of a restem or i was a little bit short of my route or whatever, whatever have you so it's stuff that even at the combine you don't you don't get i mean this is this is real football and that's why um you know just having the one experience with the senior bowl it's in my uh, opinion, way more beneficial than the combine because you get the, the the full interaction, you get the practice, and then, you know, uh, culmination with the game. WinBet is now live in New Jersey, and they're bringing the excitement of Win Las Vegas to online sports betting. Get in on all your favorite teams, players, and sports, from boosted parlays to live in-game odds on every major sport. They have what you need to win. Sign up today to receive a special offer, risk-free $500 sports bet. Download the WinBet app now or visit wynnbet.com to start winning. WinBet, an official sportsbook and gaming partner of the New York Jets. Offer subject to change. Terms and conditions at winbet.com. Must be 21 or older and present in New Jersey. If you or someone you know has a gambling problem, call 1-800-270-7117. Can we go back to your plan days? Uh, talk about yourself as a quarterback. And you played safety too, right? I played safety. Uh, my senior year, I got moved to safety. Actually, our assistant line coach, Jake Moreland. Yep. His uh, best friend is Tim Lester, who's now the head coach at Western Michigan. He uh, he came in my, my senior year, and we were going to run more of a pro-style offense at Elmer's College. So being a 5'8 dude that uh, wasn't going to be able to see very well. Uh, and we had a very good quarterback, who's one of my best friends, uh, you know, in front of me. So um, he started at quarterback, and I moved over to safety my senior year and started at free safety all year. So it was uh, – it was I'd never played defense before. I was always a quarterback all through high school. We didn't we didn't go two ways. So I was always a quarterback. So what was your weight? Up. What's that? What were you weighing in at? I was well in high school or in college. Well, you played was, you played safety it, only in college. Yeah, right. I got up to 187 my senior year okay. at 5'8". It was like carrying a ton of bricks on your feet. Yeah, it was. It was one of the dumbest moves I made because I thought, you know, hey, I'm, it's my first year playing defense. I got to be able to. I got to be able to have some sturdiness and hit some. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So I gained a bunch of weight, and now I couldn't run like I could as a quarterback. You know, so I always look back at that like that was so dumb. Like, but how much know? did your quarterback background help you oh, was, when you go back it's there? The play reason I started field. because, like I said, I mean, I wasn't. I'd never played defense. I, you know being a quarterback, you're going to know kind of everything that's going on. So that was the easy transition. It was, Hey, at the moment of truth, am I going to go stick my face in there? And I, I felt like I would, but the problem was I wasn't getting from point A to point B fast enough. Cause I was in probably 12 pounds overweight. Cause I thought I had to get nice and big right, for, yeah, yeah. for playing defense. So anyway, I played, played defense that senior year, but uh, before that I was a quarterback for three years, started one year and uh, it was a good experience. And we went to, it was a D three school in Chicago. I'm from small town Michigan, so that was a whole just the school experience being, you know, in the suburbs of Chicago was different. Um, it was cool. It was really cool. Where did the coaching bug come from? Because you're your older brother. Now, Matt is, what, seven years older than yeah, you, right? Yeah, a little over seven years. Yeah, where did it come from? So it goes, I mean, it goes 
pretty far back uh, to my grandpa, my mom's dad. Uh, he was a high school head coach in Michigan for, for 25 plus years. Um, he played at Western Michigan. Um, so he started it. My mom loved football because that's what she knew growing up. She was a cheerleader. She goes to Central Michigan, meets my dad, who's a player there. He was a, he was a linebacker there. Um, and then D-line his senior year. He gets into coaching. He coaches at Central Michigan for 23 years. And then, you know, my brother gets into it. And right. I'm the one that tried to get away from it. For, Did you really? Yeah, when I was at Elmhurst because it was a it was a Division three school. There's no scholarships. So, you, had to, you know, I had, I had to pay some money to go to, to school there. My mom's like, what? if you're going to school in Chicago, and my brother tried to talk me into it, if you're going to go to school in Chicago, you might as well go into economics, go, go, go into finance, something like that, and work down in the city, make some money. I said, you know what? You're right. And I took about one week of classes in that. And I'm like, I called my mom. She's like, I was just waiting for your call. <laughs> and I got out and went into, into education and got my degree there. And, and uh, yeah, just got into coaching and kind of worked my way up. What about the gap between you and Matt? The seven years. Yep. Was it when you guys were growing up, was it ever competitive uh, between you two? Because that's a pretty wide discrepancy but with that being said too you both are competitive guys probably competitive uh because i wanted time with him and i was the little brother that was always trying to linger around so as i was growing up no it was not competitive because he just was so much older i was always the ball boy and stuff like that and you know the annoying little brother always just trying to be around everything Um, where it probably got competitive was what i was just saying when i got into college i'm you know you're in college you're thinking you're finally a man He's still seven years. You're, you're, you know, older than you. He's working out with Sal every day. They got, <laughs> they ballooned up and got huge when they were GAs. Like, did they really? Oh my God, they got. Who? I, I got stories for days on that. Maybe <laughs> we get into it and, um, and Sal can back it up later. But uh, no, when I got into college, I felt, you know what? I'm, I'm in a college program now. I'm lifting. I'm, I'm gaining weight. I'm getting stronger. Like, let's go. You know. So when we were on our summer vacations on the beach. You know, all of a sudden you get a little challenge and that's where the competition would come. We get we get down there on the beach and, and go after it a little bit. You mentioned Sala and, and your brother obviously started out together as GAs. Um, he always talks that he was around your family quite a bit during those days. Can, can you elaborate on that? Yeah, he's so um, they were GAs at Central Michigan. And that's, a, I mean, Mount Pleasant's a small town. I mean, there's not much going on there. There's the university and then it's just small town America right there. So um, again, not much to do. And uh, then they were GAs not making any money, kind of going to class, I guess, if you want to call it that as GAs. And they um, and they lived only a mile and a half down the street because again, Mount Pleasant's not that big. They had no cable. They had hardly any furniture. So what are they going to do in the piss, Detroit Pistons are in the playoffs? They're going to come over and, you know, so you're just going to naturally hang with them. And um, crazy enough, my my wife, we were dating at the time, too. We, we started dating in high school. So Lauren got to know uh, to know Salah, my, you know, my brother, obviously, at, at an early age. And so it was kind of us four hanging out, watching playoff games and stuff like that. And, uh, yeah, they were always over. Then they'd, they'd come over in the summer. They, uh, we had a pool, so they would lather up and kind of you know get a little <laughs> suntan there and then head off to to the more the adult pools, sure uh, closer to the university as the day went on did you think early on when you're looking up at those guys that hey they're gonna do this for a long time no <laughs> no i mean i you know you did you just never know um we, we knew what we knew you know my dad again he, he coached at central michigan we thought mid-american conference football like wow like if if I could ever be a, a coach in the Mid-American Conference, like how cool that would be. And just growing up, how fun it was to go to those games, uh, particularly when I was a little bit younger. Um, Central was a pretty good football team and then kind of faded a little bit off uh, later in the 90s. And then my dad got let go. But but a 23-year run, um, they obviously did some pretty good stuff there. So um, everyone asked me, well, you know, Michigan, Michigan State. I like Central Michigan. Yeah. That's what I. That's what I thought football was. You know, I mean, it was the Mid American Conference, and um, so seeing them as GAs at, at a Division One school was a huge deal. You know, and uh, obviously Sala uh, kind of moved on and got to the Texans, and somehow, some way, as a as a QC, got my brother in in the door as a QC with Kyle Shanahan, and then they, they just kind of took off from there. Kyle Shanahan, he hired you as an intern. He did, yeah. Um, what did you think when you got your start under him and why is he such, I guess, a brilliant football mind? Uh, we talk about his father, no doubt about that. 
but what he's able to accomplish and the way he sees the game, what did you see from him and uh, why was that a great start for you? Well, it was, it was an incredible start because I had, I had coached um, college football for four years at, at a couple different small schools. Luckily uh, all four of those years, right out of college, I was a coordinator. So I got thrown right into it, was not ready for it, but you're never really ready for anything until you actually get into it, you know? And so you kind of learn through the fire and, um, because I didn't have any foundation other than playing. I, I took what I could get from Kyle and my brother and I was at their OTAs in Washington and would just listen to everything I could, you know, and then, and then dummy it down to get into a division two type offense. When I was in Davidson, I got a call just late right after the signing day on a Sunday night. And my brother's like, Hey, you're going to Cleveland. I'm like, what do you mean? Why, why, why are you going to Cleveland? You just going to Notre Dame. He's like, no, dude, you're going to Cleveland. He's like, Kyle just called. He's got a, he's got a QC spot for you, you know? And it was like, all right, when am I going? He's like, dude, in like 12 hours, you're out, you know? It was that so, quick. Oh, it was, it was 10 o'clock at night on a Sunday. My wife was sleeping. We had no kids. She was sleeping on the couch. I was watching some TV. I think we had that Monday off or something like that. Uh, Cause we just got done with the signing day. And by 8 AM I had my car packed and I was out the door. You so know? you get to Cleveland. Had to Cleveland, you know, and uh, didn't really know where what room I was going to be in. Didn't know anything. I just had a got a chance to get in and just wanted to 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 get in. Obviously, with Kyle, he's the, really the only one I knew. So, um, got in there. They put me in the offensive line room, which was to the, to this day the most beneficial year I've had. Uh, I was in the offensive line room with guys like Joe Thomas, Alex Mack, Mitchell Schwartz, Joel Batonio, John Greco. I mean, just like dudes like you know veteran dudes and then on top of it a rookie that we just drafted in Batonio who got to learn from those guys um so that was the most beneficial year to date as a coach because you saw it from a vantage point that you've never seen it uh before uh and then to answer your next question just obviously getting in with Kyle it's what you learn through him is the importance of detail and the importance uh importance of urgency like how detailed he was from the moment I met him to how it never stops and how to, it, it never stops in front of the coaches and it never stops in front of the player. He never assumes that you just got it. And he's going to make sure that the players are ultra detailed and it, it's, he'll even say it, it's going to get annoying at times, but I'm not going to stop until we get it done, you know? And so that's where you just see that detail and that, that uh, commitment to the detail. And you see it when you pop on their tape, they're an extremely detailed team. They play really tough, uh, but their details are, are, are through the roof. And then on top of it um, is just the urgency uh, of this league that he teaches you. Like you don't, you don't have time. You got to get better now. It doesn't mean you got to win a Super Bowl in year one. It doesn't mean you got to win a Super Bowl in year. It means you got to get better every single day, and it's got to show. And if you don't, then the next crew's coming on in. Right. You know? So the detail and urgency uh, are the two things when you don't, when you're not talking anything X's and O's, um, are the two things that stick out so well with him. Would you consider that he was demanding of his staff because you're talking about detail and oh, expectations? Totally. Yeah, totally. You know, and it's you know you if you're going to hold players accountable, you got to hold obviously uh, the coach is accountable too. You got to hold yourself accountable first and foremost, you know, and uh, that's something I, you know, I try to do all the time with the players. I, you know, one of the first things I, I like to do is show them where I made mistakes in a game or in a practice or within the plan, you know, because you want to show that accountability and the same thing though, we're going to hold, I'm going to hold myself accountable. So I, you do I, that from time to time, like you get in there and oh, meeting and get the film up there. And, and that's not, I mean, that's, I've seen my brother do it multiple times. Yeah. I've seen Kyle do it multiple. I mean, that's just, I think that's that should be a standard amongst us where it's it doesn't matter who's right it matters what's right you know and and like this league is it's it's just us we got to get this right fellas there's no agendas it's not like college football it's not like i recruit you like there's no agendas like we got to just figure out a find a way to put our best foot forward and win football games you know and uh and so um yeah that's just that's just like I said with Kyle, I mean, just the, the urgency that he that he makes you feel to get better. Again, it's not talking about wins and losses. Right. It's just about continuing to get better and being on our stuff. And, and what do you take from your brother uh, from a coaching perspective? Um, well, I'll, I'll answer it before you even ask the coach. And I, this is from a coaching perspective is I've never been around a guy that works as hard as he does. And I mean, that. I know it sounds kind of cliche, but uh, the two years I was with him at Atlanta, I mean, that was. You know, again, going back to what we were talking about a little bit earlier, I mean, I'm seven years younger. So when he went off to college, I was in sixth grade. So, you know, I have seven years, I guess, at, at home without him. 
And then we have some overlap when I'm a senior and he's a GA at Central. So we get yeah. to hang out all the time. And that's when we got really close is when I got a little bit older in high school and then in college. And now all of a sudden, now I'm not the little brother as much. Now we're getting uh, now we're getting closer. But I had never really been with him on a day to day basis, particularly in a work environment. So when I got to uh, Atlanta, when we were unfortunate enough that Kyle took me to Atlanta, Dan Quinn hired both myself and, and my brother, um, I got to see first, you know, firsthand what kind of worker he was, what kind of coach he was. And it's if there's 25 hours in a day, he's going to find it, you know, and uh, he doesn't stop. It's it's incredible. Uh, he doesn't blink and he just goes. And, you know, so I try to say all the time, like if I could work as hard as him, that'd be unbelievable. I don't know if I can. I don't know if I've seen anyone uh, put in the time in, in just the, the constant uh, churning of hours like he does. And, how, it, and it's efficient hours. How much did you enjoy it? And, and at the same time, is it difficult working with your brother? You know, day in, yeah, day I'm out. Sure if you asked him right now, I mean, it particularly that first year again we had never we had never been with each other for you know such a long period of time particularly in a stressful environment particularly in year one of a of a deal you know uh atlanta was a, a different situation because we got there and we had matt ryan as our quarterback mm -hmm. who played tenure we had julio jones we had roddy white you know um uh, there was i mean that that team had won a lot of games before we had got there um so we we started out pretty well i think we started out five and oh and then ended up i want to say seven and nine uh so there was a stretch there where let's just say we went two and nine maybe it was three and three and eight finish eight and eight i can't totally remember that but uh it, i mean it got it got tough in the rigors of the season and again so now it's not only um you know from a coaching staff now now you got your brother on there and you got to separate that and realize it, I, mean, I was a QC. He was a court. He, he was my boss, yeah. you know, to an extent. It's Kyle, I mean, anyone that's above you, that, that's that's your boss. They ask He's you probably got to go out of his way not to show favoritism to, uh, to you, too, and right? He was not going to show yeah. favoritism. It was going to be a beatdown before any, anything <laughs> else, you know. And uh, so it, we, we learned a lot about each other um, uh, on how to work with each other after that first year. And, uh, and then 2016 um, talked about some things in the offseason. Again, it was all love. It's just it, it was just new to us. And then uh, 16, um, what a, what an incredible ride we had, you know, with going to the Super Bowl and uh, obviously coming up a hair short there at the end that we all know. But, um, I mean, be able to, to share that experience with Matt and, and get to a Super Bowl uh, amongst other friends, obviously Kyle and Mike McDaniel, uh, Bobby Turner, stuff like that was was incredible. Do you, see, do you see similarities here, not personnel perspective, but as far as the system and what Rob is incorporating now, to back in 2017 as as far as what you're doing at the start yeah totally i mean it's um when we got to san francisco we we played uh we played the the niners in 16 uh when we were in atlanta in december and that's when we were really getting hot in atlanta uh, we won our last five to get into the playoffs get the uh get the um uh, two seed and uh, get the bye and then ended up um you know one seed loss and we got to host the nfc championship but we played the niners in december and they were they were struggling and i want to say we beat them like 49 to 14 and so when kyle came to me he's like hey we're going to the niners i was like what we just <laughs> that, you know that's it's gonna take some time yeah and, uh, and he goes this is it's it's a good situation because a um ownership in that organization wants to win and b uh, we can build this thing the right way and we're going to build it with urgency but we're going to build it the right way and so when and you know it was what it was i was going with kyle regardless but when uh sala got the job here there was no blinking like it was like okay you've you've been through this you know exactly there's there's nothing to think about uh does the organization want to win yes does the organization want to do it the right way yes are the right people in place yes and that's the way i feel and i still continue to feel that way so that's where the similarities were um you know we're going to continue to, to work urgently to get better. That's exactly what we're going to do. And the results will show uh, if, if we have that mindset. WinBet is now live in New Jersey, and they're bringing the excitement of Win Las Vegas to online sports betting. Get in on all your favorite teams, players, and sports, from boosted parlays to live in-game odds on every major sport. They have what you need to win. Sign up today to receive a special offer, risk-free $1,000 sports bet. Download the WinBet app now or visit wynnbet.com to start winning. WinBet, an official sportsbook and gaming partner of the New York Jets. Offer subject to change, terms and conditions at winbet.com. Must be 21 or older and present in New Jersey. If you or someone you know has a gambling problem, call 1-800-270-7117. John Benton, how important was his his travel here in, in addition? And then also, uh, you know, I wanted to ask you about Greg Knapp. 
I know how much personally he meant to everybody. And I, and just you can talk about him as a football coach, but also what he brought to the table, because I know he was going to be such a valuable piece of everything you guys did here. Um, I'll answer your first question first uh, before I get the emotional with Napper. But uh, no, um, John Benton was big. Uh, yeah, having the four years working with him, um, we, we, we had a good friendship, too. We had a good bond with that. Uh, so it wasn't just a, a respect from a, a work standpoint. Uh, we developed a, a, a good fresh and friendship off the field, too, which is not the end all be all by any means. You got to hire the best staff, uh, you know, uh, that, that you possibly can. But uh, he's done it for so long in, the, in this league. Um, he's done it successfully at so many different stops. Um, so for, for us to be able to get him was just an absolute just huge hire, right? Uh, not only for myself as a first time play caller and first time coordinator, uh, but, uh, you know, for the players, you know, to, to, to be able to have a guy with that much knowledge and, uh, and, and for a guy that's been able to develop players uh, to the level that, uh, you know, he's gotten guys. Um, and the second one was uh, Greg Knapp. You know, I, I didn't know Greg Knapp personally. Um, my brother kind of did because Greg always would run the, the quarterback drills at the combine. Right. And my brother um, always would, would, work those drills to get up close and personal and anyone that coaches in this league knows who Greg Knapp is. You just don't know if you knew him personally. Um, so I got a call from Raheem Morris when we hadn't had a quarterback coach yet. And he's like, and Raheem's one of my best buddies in this profession. And he was with him in Atlanta. And he's like, you got to hire Greg Knapp. And it was like, all right, you think it's a good, he's like, Mike, it's an incredible fit for you. And plus it, he, he doesn't want your job. He doesn't want anyone. He wants to be the quarterback coach and he wants to develop quarterbacks. And uh, so, you know, hearing that from a guy like Raheem, you're going to trust that. But then I got a call from Matt Ryan and Matt's like, I'm just telling you, if I was a 23 year old rookie mm. or um, a 25 year old third year player, I can't imagine a better quarterback coach than Greg Knapp, how he is consistent day in and day out. He's going to bring the same positive attitude but yet be able to coach you in the way that you need to be coached day in and day out whether you're winning whether you're losing you're going to get the same Greg Knapp every single day and so when you get just back-to-back calls from Raheem uh from from Matt Ryan um and then obviously again knowing that my brother knew him as a person and stuff it, it just was it was a no-brainer you know the took me about five seconds to be like Sal I I really would like this one to go down and Salah and, and, and the organization got that done pretty quickly and then um then it was just about getting to know them and teaching them kind of how our offense has evolved in San Francisco and, and uh, you know, how we're teaching the quarterback play. Not that it's too different from what he was doing with Matt Ryan in the West Coast system, but but there were some differences and nuances. Um, so that was a fun process, but the more fun, the, the, the better part of it was getting to know him as a person. I mean, he's such was, a positive guy, right? Everybody who, who was around him for even a minute says – he would remember your name. He, 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 you meet him once, he'd remember your name. He'd always have a smile on his face. He'd ask you how you're doing. And, um, you know, it, it, you know, you, you lose somebody, but uh, his presence was just a monstrous presence. It, it was, you, you couldn't have a bad day if you were going to spend some time with Greg Knapp. Yeah. It was um, everything you just said. Not only did he know your name, probably knew your uh, kids' names too. Yeah. And it's the truth. And uh, getting to know um, Greg in that time. And, and that year one is always a special time too because what stinks is you're away from your families as they're moving from wherever they have to move. And, you know, you're buying a house and it's going through all those processes and all that. So, yes, that stinks, not being able to be with your family for the two, three months that they're not there. But because of that, you get to spend a little bit more time outside of the building, getting some dinners with some of your staff, getting to know them on a personal level. And um, I spent probably more time with Greg Knapp than anyone else on our staff. It, we just, if it wasn't football, we enjoyed going out, getting some good food, yeah. having a, gl- a glass of wine or two, and then waking up and having some good coffee. Like that was the best life that he could have right there. It's just a good dinner, good coffee, and then right back to work, you know? And, uh, we, we spent a lot of time uh, together here uh, or in, in Chatham. And then we actually spent some time out in Napa. We had a, a long weekend and I wanted to go back and see my family. He was going back to see his uh, lovely wife, Charlotte. And so we were up in Napa and him and Charlotte came up and we spent a day up in Napa after only knowing him for two months, you know, and yeah. had an absolute unbelievable time there. And um, there was a, there was such a, a calmness and at peace 
when you were with him and you could see it in his eyes at how how much he enjoyed just life, you know, and uh, he taught us a lot about football. He taught us a lot about life. I could go on for hours talking about Greg Nash. Yeah, I know. Uh, and, and anyone that knew him, anyone that saw uh, his celebration of life, um, that, that could have gone on for 24 hours. People didn't want to get off that stage because they wanted to share stories of, of their time with Greg Nash. Yeah, and it's difficult to transition off of that. But I know what Robert said at the beginning of training camp was, what he said was, uh, you know, he would want us to go on no, and, totally. and and carry through with positivity, continue to teach and to develop because that's what he was all about. With that being said, how much did you enjoy the year as a whole, the first time being an offensive coordinator in the National Football League? It was, um, it was believe it or not, everything I wanted, you know, and selfishly I say I there, but uh, um, I – I needed to get out and challenge myself. You know, I'd been with Kyle for seven years. Um, when he asked me if I was going, it was, uh, you know, I just felt like it was the right situation and the right timing. Um, being with a guy that I respect, not only as a friend and, and, and Robert, uh, but uh, as a worker, seeing how he, he worked with that defense for four years, seeing how he was in front of the room. Um, it, it was just a no brainer, you know, and it was just, it was time for me to, to, to go learn about myself and, uh, and, and challenge myself and put together a staff and then, and then get to work with these guys, you know, and again, the, the challenge of, um, coming to a team that, that, you know, hasn't been in the playoffs for, for a little bit that, that what didn't even go into my thought process. I just wanted to go again to an organization that was going to, uh, that was committed to winning that wanted to win and, and with the right people in place. So, um, it was, uh, there was definitely, there was definitely ups, there was definitely downs. Um, I like where our, our progress went, uh, particularly later in the year. Uh, we got a long way to go. The first year is always difficult because you're setting a standard. You're putting in new stuff. Right. Uh, we played, obviously, the most rookies out of any team in the league. So you got that challenge on top of uh, having a rookie quarterback. Uh, but now, like I told the players, the, the next step's even harder. <laughs> we got to go get, we got to get better and we got to get better with urgency. You know, it's not pressing, it's just urgency. So um, it was, it was awesome. Uh, we've loved living in this area. Um, it is an awesome place to raise a family. And I'm not just saying this, but this fan base is, they're cool, man. Yeah. It is a cool fan base. They just, they're thirsty. And, they are and thirsty. You can, and you can feel it, you know, and uh, you want to do it for them. And there's a, there, there's nothing like going out that locker room on a Sunday. And, you know, obviously I was up in the booth uh, for that back half of the year, but just feeling that energy and going into NFL stadiums and some feel different than others, you know, uh, San Francisco's felt different than New York's uh, not good or bad. Just, it, it's just different. And uh, it, it, it's a, it's, it's a cool, cool deal. The, the, the Jets nation is, is awesome. And uh, you know, we want to get this thing done. What did you tell Zach Wilson at the end of the season? Uh take a deep breath, you know, kind of the same thing I did to him when, uh, um, you know, he got, he got hurt there for the, for the four weeks, just take a deep breath, sit back. Um, all rookies, whether it be the second pick quarterback or the fourth round running back, it, that's a long year. Yeah. Uh, not only 16 games, now 17 games, uh, plus the three preseason games, which people don't look into the preseason. That's a big deal for, for rookies. I mean, they're, 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 they're nervous. They're, you know, I mean, it's, and if you're not, you're, Cold blooded, I guess, you know, but uh, it's it's a long year when you think about you have that season. Not only that, they had a COVID season uh, in, in 20 and then you got the combine, you got your pro days and then you go straight to rookie minicamp and then you go straight to OTAs and then you have about five weeks and then boom, you're in from training camp from late July, hopefully playing all the way to, to mid February, but at least till till early January. And it's long. And uh, so for him. Um, it was just to take a deep breath. I know does he have the ability to do that? He's no, a junkie. I don't, think he, I don't think he does, <laughs> but, but he knows what I'm talking about when I say that yeah. everyone's going to, some guys breasts are going to be longer than others. Yeah. You know, I just didn't want him to, to be back in Utah by Wednesday already throwing. He just needed to just, just chill for a little bit, go on a trip. I, like I kept telling him, go have an experience, whatever that means for you. And I'll just get out. And, and then once you're ready to roll, go roll. And, uh, we know the stuff we need to work on. Um, I don't like to talk to the players, uh, too much about this and that and the other of what you need to work on immediately following the season where everyone coaches, players, the organization, they're drained by that time. So you just, uh, you know, you give them a few things, you let them know how much you appreciate them and love them. And then, and then you step back as again, as coaches, I needed that two and a half weeks to just, just clear my mind and sometimes sitting at the beach with your family and just watching them have fun. 
some of those, that's the best ideas that you can come up with about how we're going to help this player become a better player and how we're going to help this offense become a better offense. And so I'm excited to get contacted with these guys again. I'll be in constant contact with Zach. He knows what he needs to work on. Obviously having John back here was huge, yeah. um, you know, working with them. So, um, you know, it'll, uh, it'll be good. Well, let's end it right here. How cool was it for you when you guys got into a flow, because it, it, you're watching this from afar, like I was, it, it, like, well, well Fleur's really in rhythm right now. And you'll say, you know what, you need more plays. And that, I mean, that played out. When yeah. you when you had more plays, you can open it up, you can do more things. But for you as a coach, how much do you enjoy it when everybody's live, when the ball is just being distributed all over the place and you guys are winning at the line of scrimmage. We saw glimpses of that down the stretch. It's, um, it's football, you know, yeah. you get to just see it the right way. You know, it's just, um, it, it's cool. It's, and it's, it's just a testament to, to the guys. Like, it's just, you know, you, everyone has their different why of why they do it, you know, but w one of mine is being able to share an experience uh, after a game, particularly after a win, uh, but even after a loss with the with the guys that put so much work into it, you know, and so, um, you know, as you put in a system and you, you're, you're teaching coaches, you're developing coaches, you're teaching players, you're developing players and seeing it all come together, uh, sometimes not the way you want it. But but when it does uh, and we're, you know, and showing them the picture of what this is going to be when we flip this thing, um, it's pretty cool. And, and, you know, the cool part about these guys is they're in the boat. Um, and again, now we just, we need to go get better. We need to continue to get better. We're going to continue to add here. Got so much trust in Joe and in the group upstairs um, to, to, you know, we, we're all on the same page with this thing. Uh, so, uh, you know, like I said, it's, it's urgently working to get better. Well, you were unbelievably gracious with your time. Really enjoyed catching up and hopefully we can do this again in the future. No doubt. Thanks, Eric. Appreciate it.